to be vigilant against potential. Over the past year, the world has witnessed The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God has made. He said to the woman, What is the purpose of life if we all eventually die? Why am I here? Why do good people suffer? If you're like me, you've probably pondered these questions and found that there are countless answers, making it challenging to decide what to believe. Perhaps you've chosen to distance yourself from God or stuck with the answers that most of your family, friends and other people around you believe to be true. If we go back to Adam and Eve's parable, Genesis 3 verse 6 and 7 says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Ouch. I know that feeling well. I can almost feel their pain. It's the hurt and fear of not knowing what happens next. The struggle of facing God and confessing your senseless distrust. But surprisingly, this is not the hardest part. The hardest part is coping with thoughts like, you failed, God will never love you again. I'm sure you've also heard those eyes that Satan put in your mind because you made a mistake. Satan makes it seem like you're in his playground now. But I recently learned that sin is too expensive for me. It comes with a high price tag of mental, emotional and spiritual pain. I chose ignorance for too long, but not anymore. Let me start by telling you about a little purple-hearted girl. I was raised by my wonderful grandparents in a small town in the mountains of Transylvania. This is in Romania, and yes, I love my colleague. The reason, you might ask? Money. My parents didn't have any left for me. While they were far away in the city, working long hours to pay for my siblings' education, I was left with my grandparents, where there was free shelter and food. The way I see it, I was the luckiest. My granddad knew everything I needed to know about life. He taught me how to love, how to be brave, and how to be happy. For the first seven years of my life, I didn't have any children my age to play with, so I had to be creative. My playmates were anything I could find in the nature around me. I remember the day I realized Ants were everywhere I looked. So I began begging God for forgiveness at night because I was killing so many of them on my daily walks. At the age of seven, it was time for my official education. My parents took me to the city and sent me straight to school. Even though I hadn't been to kindergarten or had any idea of how to behave in public, I dealt with my brand new challenges the best way that I could. 
But as time went on, I realized I was never going to be the same as my schoolmates. You see, as a child of a Seventh-day Adventist family, my freedom was cut short of many life's experiences. I was not allowed to dance, eat pork, or see food, dress what I wanted, wear earrings or jewelry, wear makeup or paint my nails, go to parties or clubs, and so many other things. From Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, I wasn't allowed to reap fruits, cook, wash, or even go shopping. It felt like dying for 24 hours. That scared me because I was thrown into a whole new world full of people and I had never felt more alone. As a child, I didn't fully understand why I had to follow all those rules. I felt especially sad when comparing my new life to the seven years I had spent with my grandparents where I could do almost anything I wanted. I was jealous of my schoolmates because they were living the life I couldn't. How could I ever be accepted without smoking or going to parties? I gave up. All that was left for me was go to church and make friends with other children like me. And so I did. After university, I decided it was time to try new things. I got a taste of almost everything my non Seven Day Adventist friends had. Any small ones, of course. My entire existence was a puppet show in which I was the puppeteer. I excluded God from almost every aspect of my life. I went to UK for work, I got myself an amazing good-looking boyfriend, moved in with him, discovered the ins and outs of love in a mature relationship. I got into a career path and had plans for a bright future. Talking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All my life seemed to be going in the right direction, except for one thing. My constant sense of shame. Shame about living with my boyfriend while unmarried, shame about cutting ties with my family and friends in fear of judgment, shame I wasn't going to church or helping other people. Basically, I overlooked most religious rules I had ever been taught by living, the selfish lifestyle I had never been allowed to experience back home. At some point, my conscience died and with it, everything that was beautiful inside me. I felt trapped in a never-ending cycle of self-deception, constantly battling between the facade I present in the world and the truth I hid within. It was exhausting to keep up the charade, but I couldn't bear the thought of revealing my true emotions and vulnerabilities to others. What a lie and what a confused life I was living. One day, I woke up and realized I needed to start over no matter what. It was as if I were a ticking time bomb. After ending things with my boyfriend, I moved back to Romania, and that's when COVID hit, of course. As a result, I was unemployed, broke, and without prospects. I recall locking myself in my apartment for an entire week to cry. I just didn't feel like getting up or interacting with anyone. After a week, I had lost four kilograms and I was profoundly depressed. And I had only one thought. God, forgive me. I know now that God is the only absolute truth. I really wish I didn't eat the fruit like Eve and just trusted that God was right. But it happened. It cost me many years of the peaceful life I could have had. And that's sad. But I've learned my lesson. I won't doubt God again. If he says it's hot, I won't touch it. Despite my future's uncertainty, I decided to prioritize God in everything I would do from that moment on. I realized I was deceived by the same serpent as Eve when it asked her. I saw life outside church as the desired fruit, but it brought only destruction and pushed me away from my grandparents' garden where life was pure, harmonious, and full of joy. I asked God to guide me in finding my true life's purpose. I asked Him to never let me go on my own again. 
and to change my heart so much that it will be only for him. I felt like God graced my last request and sent me the perfect transformation lesson. when the pandemic started, I met a nice old lady on the street. She looked clean and neat, but I noticed her searching for food in a trash bin. I decided to share my lunch and ask about her life. I was curious as to why a clean, well-presented lady was looking for food in the bins. She started telling her story, but I had to go meet someone, so I promised to meet her again to continue our conversation on the upcoming Saturday. I suggested meeting on a bench nearby since she didn't have a phone. For our first arranged meeting, I brought coffee and slowly started learning about her life. Eva was shy at first, but because we met every Saturday for over a year, I found many things that weren't right in her life. She told me her husband had passed away and how she was living with a family member who didn't give her the conditions and respect any human being deserves. During the day, she had to take care of both his wife and the dog. He took her full pension every month in exchange for letting her stay there. She even mentioned that he sometimes mistreated her. At 68 years old and with a small pension, she couldn't afford to leave elsewhere. It was either that or be homeless. Her story bothered me and decided to take action. Along with bringing her food every Saturday, I shared her story with a well-known Romanian radio station that helped people in need during the Christmas period. They responded to my request for help and raised enough money for her to move out. I found her a small flat and provided everything she needed to start living there. <laughs> through me, assisting her in getting a home, food and an opportunity to improve her life. It felt really good, as if there was another happy heart inside me. What I learned from this experience was that God uses ordinary people to achieve extraordinary things. I simply gave my time, lunch and coffee to an elderly woman and God took care of the rest in an amazing way. This experience changed how I face life's obstacles it taught me how to tackle my own problems with divine love instead of judgment, with faith instead of fear, and from an eagle's perspective rather than a worm's. This is just one of the many lessons I've learned after putting my life in God's hands. Since then, I've been driven to explore everything there is to know about God and how He can make my life. Join me in this incredible journey. Together, we will unlock the Bible's hidden mysteries. Get ready for eye-opening real-world reports and experiences that will shed light on the subtle tricks and deceptions that Satan has been pulling since ancient times and still continues to do today will create a deeper connection with God by dispelling the myth that he's some distant and approachable figure. He said we will learn to see God as our trusted confidant, a divine friend with whom we can share all our fears. Although I still have a lot to learn and grow before I can feel the shoes God has for me. As many of the doors that were once closed begin to open, I feel closer than ever to fulfilling my life's mission of changing people's lives. Well, I believe that I'm currently on the right path, I must admit, God keeps it extra spicy and exciting every day. With every step of helping others, God takes care of my messy life. And boy, let me tell you, it's no joke when God decides to bless you in every area of your life. You'll never believe the miracles He already did for me, all to come on this channel. But you are, you are likely to become a true believer if you join me on this journey. And if my story has helped you in any way, please support me by liking and subscribing to my channel. I promise to work hard in finding all the garbage Satan planted in us and guide you towards a life filled with the truth of God, a life of peace that surpasses all understanding.
In case you're wondering if my revision was worth the pain from childhood, see you in the next one.